Hello student, my name is Bhagirip Kalal from Alger Institute of Engineering and Technology. Welcome to the, my online lecture series of refrigeration and air conditioning subject. Today I will discuss numerical based on BCRS cycle, vapor, there is vapor compression refrigeration cycle. This is a very important numerical because in this numericals all the fundamentals are clear. Okay, so let's start the numerical. A food storage requires a refrigeration capacity of 12 tier. 12 tier means 12 ton, that is the capacity of the plant and works between evaporating temperature that is minus 8 degree and condenser temperature that is a 30 degree centigrade. The refrigerant in this plant used that is a R12 is subcooled by 5 degree centigrade before entering the expansion valve. That means uh, before going to the expansion valve, the temperature of refrigerant decreases after condensers. Okay, and the vapor is superheated minus 2 degree before leaving the evaporator coil. Before leaving the evaporator coil or we can say before going to compressor. Okay, first draw a pH diagram for the process and find out the COP of the plant power required in kilowatt per ton. Take specific heat of liquid refrigerant as 1.235 kJ per kg Kelvin and for vapor uh, that is 0.733 kJ per kg Kelvin. Okay, here are two specific heat. CP values given two types that is for liquid refrigerant is the same but for liquid phase that is 1.235 for vapor phase 0.7335. So make sure remember when we are refrigerant in vapor phase that time you use CP value 0.733 and when uh, refrigerant in a uh, liquid phase that time we use 1.235 kJ per kg Kelvin. So make sure this data is very important data. Okay. So first of all uh, turn of refrigeration. Ton of refrigeration that is a TR. TR means ton of refrigeration. One ton is equals to 211 kilojoule per minute in terms of per minute or we can say 3.5 kilowatt. Okay, we can say 3.5 kilowatt. So for this numericals, our table is given saturation temperature minus 8 degree, corresponding value is given, saturation pressure, enthalpy and entropy or corresponding 30 degree all, uh, value is given for pressure, enthalpy and entropy. So first of all, right? Minus 8 degrees what? Minus 8 degrees evaporator temperature that is corresponding value of enthalpy for liquid for liquid uh, point that is a 28.72 and for vapor phase 184.07 entropy for minus entropy for minus 8 degrees 0.1149 for liquid and uh, for vapor is 0.7007. Similarly for 30 degrees that is a condenser temperature. Okay, first of all at this value sign there is a H Enthalpy is corresponding minus 8 degree, that is H F, this is H G, this is a S F and this is a S G. Okay, this is value. And for corresponding temperature minus 8 degree. Okay, this is the value. And minus uh, and 30 degrees this value. Here again write H F, this is H G, this is S G, uh, sorry. This is SF, this is SG. Okay. Next, 12 tier. So, given capacity is 12 tier, so converted into kilowatt, 42 kilowatts. Next, first we draw pH diagram for this numerical. How to do? Just a brief idea how to draw this numerical. Draw P, H, Hsiska. Like this in this chart. Chart is already given for you. And draw a line okay. again. pH this is pressure line, this is enthalpy line. Draw a line related to pressure 2.3 bar minus 8 degree, corresponding to this one, and 30 degree. So, this is our line okay. Above this is condenser temperature. 30 degree uh, respective and this is minus 8 degree okay see 30 degree temperature line and in inside the dome is a horizontal and again up, again this line and asking that sub cooled 5 degree 5 degree before entering that means temperature reduces after condenser that is 30 degree to 25 degree so in the numerical see 
25 degree line and draw this side. This is 25 degree temperature line. Okay. Similarly, uh, <coughs> superheated. That is a before going to the condenser. This is minus 8 degree. This line is a minus 8 degree, and before going to condenser, this is a minus 2 degree. So minus 2 degree is a more than minus 8. That's why minus 2 degree line. So see here minus 2 degree line. This is our minus 2 degree line. Like this, we draw a pH. So in this animation, we already seen. This is pH. This is our dome. Draw first minus 8 degree temperatures corresponding lines. So form vertical in the chart minus 8 degree and draw a line in the dome. This is a horizontal and outside the dome is a vertical. So outside dome we see a minus 8 degree line and draw this one. Similarly, like draw minus uh, draw like a condenser temperature line. This is 30 degree. And similarly, subcooling region also when there is 25 degree, and this one is showing this line. Uh, this one is a subcooling line. Okay, this is our subcooling. This is minus 5 degree. Okay, here phase is a saturation liquid phase. But if you are converting in the subcool, if you are doing subcooling, that means phase is totally in the liquid phase. Okay, this is a liquid phase. Similarly, superheated, this is our minus 2 degree line and superheated before going to the compressor, it is our superheated phase. This is our superheated. Okay. So, connect these lines because of enthalpy in compressor, this is isentropic enthalpy. Isentropic process in compressor, that's why enthalpy is in this curvature way and connect this lines. Okay, this is our chart. This is our complete chart. Okay. So finally we obtain complete chart 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the process. 1 to 2 is a compressor. 1 to 2 is a compressor. 2 to 3. 2 to 3 is what? 2 to 3 is a condenser, 3 to 4 is an expansion valve and 4 to 1 is an evaporator, is a evaporator, evaporator, clear? Yeah. So now what is the COP? COP is what? COP is refrigeration effect divided by work of compressor, refrigeration effect one, 4 to 1 that is H1 minus H4 divided by H2 minus H1. So, first things our funda is that for calculating COP, calculate H1, H2 and H4 because H1, H2 and H4 using in this COP formula. So, how to calculate H1? H1 by using of this formula, H1 is equals to Hg plus CPV, CPV, V, CP, C, T superheated minus T saturated or uh, T saturated. Hg is what? Enthalpy up to this point. Enthalpy up to this point, which is given in the table. Okay. But after superheated phase, enthalpy is not given. So that's why we use MC delta T form. MC delta T form. Because outside the dome, we apply the uh, ideal case equation formula that is MC delta T. Okay. So mass is for 1 kg Cp vapor. We use here Cp for vapor because it's superheated phase and vapor phase. That's why we use a uh, specific heat for the vapor that is 0 0.733 Kelvin and T superheated minus T saturated. T superheated and minus T saturated is minus 8 to minus 2 and we put all the values Hg is from Hg is what? Corresponding to minus 8 Hg. Hg is 20. Uh, 184 for vapor is 184. This is a 184 H G. This is H F. Okay. So put all the values T superheated to 71, T saturated to 65. So we calculate H1 is equals to 188.468 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Now H2. H2 is where? H2 is in superheated phase. H2 is superheated phase. Again, H2 is what? Hg. Enthalpy up to this one. Hg. We already know. Hg. 
corresponding to 30 degree temperature Hg this is 199.6 that is Hg is known CPV CP outside the dome we apply NC delta D similarly in previous case so T superheated temperature and T saturated clear so Hg is given CPV vapor already given T saturated 303 Kelvin and T superheated okay T superheated temperature of superheated point is not given that means at this point temperature is not given but we temperature is known at here that is 30 degree 30 to 70 plus 273 plus 30 degrees 270 303 Kelvin so this one is given but 2 superheated at point 2 not given how to calculate but we know that 1 to 2 process isentropic process isentropic process entropy at point 1 and entropy at point 2 by equating both two entropy we calculated T superheated okay so S2 is what Sg plus CPV log T superheated ln divided by T saturated so 1 to 2 isentropic S2 equals to S1 so S1 is what Sg plus CPV is to ln natural log T superheated divided by T saturated and by equating this both two because T uh, for at condition point number one point number one T superheated and T saturated both are known and Sg from table and CPV already known so we calculate first S1 and equating to S2 so Sg from we taken from the table CPV is given and T saturated temperature that is a 303 Kelvin and unknown is only T superheated and we calculate the T superheated so Sg corresponding to 30 degree uh, minus 8 degree temperature T superheated corresponding to min, uh, minus 8 degree temperature so 271 to saturated to 265 and we calculate the S1 that is a 0 0.717 kJ per kg Kelvin now S2 is what S2 is equal to Sg plus Cp logs T superheated divided by T saturated is equal to 0 0.717 what is 0 point this is equal to S1 because we know that S2 is equal to S1 okay so put all the values from table and calculate T superiority divided by T saturated equals to E raised to 0 0.0432 so T superiority we obtain is equal to 316.3 Three seven Kelvin. Okay, but always this T saturated value is more than T saturated at thirty degree. That is three zero three Kelvin. Always comes more than three zero three Kelvin for just verification. Next, so we obtain temperature three one six three seven Kelvin. T saturated and T. Okay, so we all the data put in this formula. So we obtain H2 value. We obtain H2 value. So H2 is what? H2 is 209.42 kJ per kg. Per kg. H2 209.42 kJ per kg. So now find out the point 3. What is point 3? Point 3 is equals to uh, subcooling phase because after condenser so first uh, our last term is h4 we calculate h4 so h4 is equals to h3 because 3 to 4 is an isenthalpic process 3 to 4 is an isenthalpic process that's why we taken h3 is equals to h4 so how to calculate h4 so first calculate h3 by equating it uh, whichever whatever we obtain that is equals to h4 but h3 is a subcooled phase so uh, we know the enthalpy h3 how to calculate H F enthalpy at here but less than this one so minus N C delta T so we apply M is uh, 1 C P liquid just remember here we use liquid because this phase is a liquid phase that's why C P liquid of refrigerant T delta T again we can use delta T temperature difference or we can say 30 minus 50 or we can say 30 minus 50 delta T. HF 
corresponding to 30 degree. 30 degree is this one HF liquid for 64.59. So we put 64.59 minus CP or liquid. One CP for liquid is 1.235 and delta T is of 5 degree centigrade. Directly difference, if it difference has, you can put the direct in a terms of degree centigrade. Okay. So let's find out data. Okay. H3, H3 dash minus H3 dash is what? At the saturated point. At the saturated point, that is H3. This value is already this one. This is our value. Minus Cp liquid. T3 dash minus T3. So we obtain finally H3 is equals to 58.41. 58.41 and which is equals to H4. So finally H4 we calculated. So all the enthalpies at point 1, 2 and 4 calculated. Okay. Now COP will be calculated which is equal to 6.2. This is the theoretical COP. Okay. Now refrigeration effect we already know 42 point kilowatt. So RE is equal to M dot. We know that refrigeration effect is equal to M dot H1 minus H1. So now calculate the M dot mass flow rate which is equal to 0.32. To 9 kg per second. This is the mass flow rate in the refrigeration per cycle. To extract this much amount, 42 kilowatt, that is means 42 kilojoule per second of amount is heat removed from the plant. That time flow rate of refrigeration is 0.329. So power required is what? M dot into S2 power is where? The compressor required the power that is S2 minus H1 into mass flow rate in this compressor. So we calculate the power required is 6.76 kilowatt. Thank you so much.